Hello everyone, my name is Naren and in this session, let's learn about IAC, which is Infrastructure as Code. I hope you guys would have learned about IAAS, which is Infrastructure as Service, which basically means you provision computing infrastructure on cloud or internet without you owning data centers or servers. How cool was that? It was the coolest thing about a decade ago, but not anymore because all of our projects are kind of deployed on um, you know, AWS or Azure or Google Cloud. For simplicity, uh, going forward, we'll take AWS as a default, a default um, cloud provider for, for the examples, okay? Now, let's take an example. If you have a project which you are supposed to deploy it on the cloud, then how do you do it? You basically go for, go to AWS, right? You log into AWS console, you will basically create VPC um, network for yourself, and then you will provision a couple of EC2 instances. You might be creating S3 buckets and then configuring auto scaling groups and some configuration in Route 53 or DNS configuration setting. All of these things, we basically do it manually by logging into the console or if you're not doing it as a developer, maybe uh, some of the DevOps engineers might be doing it or IT infra team would be taking care of it. Anyway, we all do it manually by logging into the AWS console. But is this kind of process um, efficient or maintainable? Or is it reliable? So IAC basically solves the same problem. The core idea of infrastructure as uh, code is that none of the engineers should be going into the console, AWS console, to provision or configure any of our services. IAC says that all of your infrastructure should be treated as code, like any of the code which we basically write. And once you represent all the infrastructure as code, you basically have a code which you can give it to AWS or IAS's service provider. We basically understand what are the infrastructure we needed and they provision automatically. Are there open source tools um, or services available where you give the code to that tool? It basically calls all of the APIs uh, which AWS has exposed and automatically con you know, provisions all of the services uh, and um, you know, servers you needed automatically. Let's uh, try to understand all of the problems which you face if we don't use IAC and, and then we'll understand what are the advantages of using IAC. Problem number one, cost of hiring IT people or DevOps engineering. They don't come cheap, right? You will have to pay salaries for them as well. For a simple project, you will at least need one DevOps or IT engineers, or even developers can do it. Um, but let's take, for example, you need one IT uh, ops engineer or DevOps engineer who can take care of all of your infrastructure uh, on AWS um, you know, cloud. So you will have to pay them. Say, for example, if it is a really complex project, you will have to have a couple of um, DevOps engineer. In that case, uh, say you have five DevOps engineers. In that case, you will have to pay salaries for five engineers. And also, you might need to consider to hire a lead to manage all of them or a manager to you know, handle all of them. In that case, you will have to pay salaries for them as well. It's kind of costly, right? The co it's not really cost effective. And the second problem is availability and scalability. Uh, let's take an example that you have uh, a multi-tenant uh, application. In this case, if a new or you know, client onboards, then you will have to create a new infrastructure for them quickly and efficiently. And far most important is everything should be perfect without making mistakes. If you're doing it manually, most likely cases that there are human errors in it. And how confident uh, you are once you build that, that how confident you can say that the infrastructure is perfectly uh, set up with all the configuration values you needed. So it's kind of hard, right? All of these problems. And the third problem is inconsistency. Say, for example, any complex project will definitely have a lot of different environments. The first one is dev, um, QA, staging, and prod. All of these environments should be same, right? Um, otherwise, some things might work on dev, and some things fail on staging, and some things else is happening on production. So most likely that we want all of these different environments to be same. That means that the configuration should be same. Otherwise, what happens, the problem called as configuration drift, where the configuration slowly changes 
um, between environments. Say for example, some de some developer logged into your developer you know environment in AWS console and changed some configuration while testing or while debugging, and you forgot to revert it back. Then the configuration has changed, but the QA configuration is totally different. Now, when you test your code or when you write your code, you basically write for dev environment. And when you push it to QA, it might fail, or it could happen with QA and prod. Things might uh, fail when you're trying to deploy it on the prod. So we want to keep these environments as possible. That means that we need one source of truth about the in infrastructure. That means that having all of this uh, infrastructure itself or the infrastructure definition itself as a configuration or a code is the way to make it consistent, reliable, cost effective. So before knowing the advantages or benefits of IAC, I just wanna give a little idea of how exactly this works. Say for example, you need an EC2 instance and S3 bucket to be set up on your infrastructure, then how you basically represent this particular infrastructure as code or configuration is, for example, this way. Every infrastructure as service provider or AWS, Google Cloud or Azure have their own IAC services. Say for example, in AWS, it is called as cloud formation. I think in uh, Azure, it is called as cloud uh, resource manager or something like that, where you write this piece of configuration or code, they basically read this configuration file and they provision the S3 or EC2 instance automatically. How it works is, when the service reads your configuration file, it knows, it knows all the configuration parameters you need, and they know what resource you are requesting for and how many and what is the size. Uh, say, for example, if it is EC2, you can specifically mention what kind of EC2 it is um, and where, which region you want, or what is the RAM size, what is the hard disk, what is the uh, you know security group, all of these things. You basically write it as a configuration, right? When the service reads this configuration, it exactly knows what you really want and then they automatically provision these things. It's not just that um, IASS providers will provide the service. There are a lot of open source tools also available like Chef, Puppet, Puppet and Terraform. Terraform is kind of cool, um, which I'm also using um, these days in our project, uh, where you basically can write even complex um, uh, infrastructure uh, easily uh, and it has its own learning curve. Uh, it's obvious that you need to learn a little bit about Terraform before you actually using it, but it's kind of cool. You represent everything as resource and you can reuse also, you can have variables and you can map these variables here and there in your templates. Uh, basically, you end up having a code, piece of code, when this Terraform tool um, reads this configuration or the code, what it does is it makes the API call to AWS or any of the Google, uh, any of the IASS provider. Terraform basically supports all the major cloud providers. Uh, say for example, if it is AWS, we mention AWS as um, our service provider or cloud provider in our, our script or code. Um, what it does is when it reads all of this code or configuration, it basically makes API call using your secret key uh, to AWS console and it automatically provisions all the um, servers or services you need it. You can, the coolest thing about using these services is that you can actually see what this tool is going to provision for you. That means that you can uh, see the plan um, or you know what it's going to do. Um, that way you, you can kind of like double check as well. That's, that's the whole idea, right? This tool basically talks over REST API, or whatever API call which your cloud provider has, has exposed and um, configures all the infrastructure for you. Now, let's go to benefits. The first one is you can treat this configuration as co uh, configuration or code as any piece of code in your project. The advantage is this configuration can go through the same CI CD pipeline. That means that you can actually write tests for this configuration or the code which you have written for infrastructure as well. And also it is versioned. The advantage of having versioned is basically you have a, this, these files are also tracked in Git. That way you can revert your infrastructure file to the previous known working configuration. So that's kind of cool because you did some modification to your infrastructure and it, the whole infrastructure is started to fail. 
then what you can do is you can basically revert back to the previous infrastructure which was working fine and then you redeploy the whole infrastructure will be rebuilt with a known configuration that way it's kind of very easy uh, to go between versions in, in simple words the whole infrastructure itself is versioned that means that you don't have to really worry too much when you're making changes to your infrastructure you can go back to any previous versions it's that easy uh, if it was manually then what you guys would have done is you'll have to see or first of all you don't know what you had earlier it's very hard to remember everything you had right either you have to document it somewhere this was the configuration you had uh, in the previous version it's not going to happen right um, it will be like a whole chaotic situation but having it as a code itself solves a lot of problem like you can go back to uh, previous version or you can even go back and see in that version what was the configuration setting which which i had the second advantage is as i mentioned you don't have to really spend a lot of money on devops or it resources at all it's not just about hiring those resources you will have to have a place for them you will have to have a hardware for them right it's kind of like costly you don't have to worry about that as a developer, I know exactly what kind of infrastructure I need for my software or piece of software which I have written or the code which I have. So I know exactly what I need. I don't have to really ping a DevOps guy or you know IT guy, please can you provision, can you first, uh, can I have this resource or can you please provision this resource for me and then wait for them to respond back that yeah, I have provisioned this server, you can go and deploy. I have provisioned this S3 bucket and you can start running your code or any of these things, right? And these hazards will be gone when you have IAC. And the next benefit is speed. I just mentioned how it works, right? If you can think of a tool which is reading your code or configuration, making an API call, any human cannot be as fast as that tool because it reads the configuration, it notes the plan, like how many servers I need, what is the first resource which I should be deploying or provisioning first, and then what I need to do next. It just makes API call very faster and humans can't really do that. And when machines do it, it does it right um, as the code says. So it's always faster and it's always reliable. And the next benefit is consistency. Say for example, um, I already mentioned about inconsistency if you don't have IAC, right? Basically, it solves the same problem. Uh, like you have a consistent infrastructure between all of these different um, environments like QA, dev, uh, staging, and um, production because you have only one source of truth or uh, source of information about infrastructure, the same piece of code will be run on dev, staging, and uh, QA or prod. So all the infrastructure will be built using the same configuration which is in the code. So even though if someone has changed it, it basically recorrects or changes it to the uh, configuration which is mentioned in the code. And the next advantage is accountability. So this way, uh, what ac accountability means is who did what. Say, if you don't have IAC, you basically go to log into the console of QA or prod, you can change any configuration. But tomorrow, no one knows who did it. That's kind of difficult, right? You can basically track using some of the logs which your um, you know, AWS or Azure provides, but it's kind of difficult. But if you have IAC, you will have to change everything in the code. That way, it is kind of tracked in your Git or version control that who did this configuration change. So that way, whoever has changed, he's accountable for those. So all in all, the productivity of uh, your development lifecycle will be um, efficient, will become better using IAC.